Welcome to Lecture Online, and here we're going to do an example on calorimetry because understanding how calorimetry works will help us later on do some additional examples when we try to measure the heat released or, or taken in by chemical reactions. So here is a simple calorimeter. We have an aluminum cup. We have the cup filled with water. The cup has a mass of 75 grams. The water has a mass of 250 grams and the two together start at the initial temperature of 20 degrees centigrade. We're now going to take an unknown object, has a mass of 100 grams, and it starts at a temperature of 100 degrees centigrade. We probably got it to be in that state by putting it in boiling water, waiting it for the thermal equilibrium to take effect, and then by removing it from the boiling water and putting it into our calorimeter. The object of the exercise is to figure out the specific heat of the unknown object. And we can do that with a calorimeter. We can do it by simply saying that all the objects that gain heat will be equal to, I should say, not all the objects, but all the heat gained by the objects that are gaining heat should equal to all the heat lost by the objects that are losing heat. The objects that are gaining heat is aluminum and the water. The object that's losing heat would be unknown. So we can write that the Q, because we use the letter Q for heat, so Q gained by the cold objects equals Q lost by the hot objects. And when we write it like this, we're going to make every quantity a positive quantity. That's very important because we set the heat gained equal to the heat loss, so we need everything to be positive for this equation to work. So what is gaining heat? Well, the aluminum is gaining heat, and of course the heat gained by something can be written as MC delta T, and that would be done for the aluminum, plus the heat gained by the water, which is MC delta T for the water. So that's the heat gained by the aluminum and that's the heat gained by the water which must equal the MC delta T, the heat lost by the unknown. So we'll just write UNK for unknown. Alright, so now of course what we're looking for is this C right there, right? The specific heat of the unknown. Everything else is known. We know the masses of all three. We know the specific heat of these two. We know the delta T for each of the three objects involved in this heat exchange. So now what we want to do is isolate the specific heat of the unknown. With other words, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by the M and delta T of the unknown. So the M, the mass, times the delta T of the unknown. When we do that, of course, the mass cancels out. The delta T of the unknown counts out on the right side, and all we have left is the specific key that we're looking for. Okay, now we're going to rewrite the equation, and we're going to put this on the left side and all of this on the right side. So from here we can go C is equal to the MC delta T of the aluminum plus the MC delta T of the water, all divided by the M and the delta T of the unknown object. Of course, this will be the C of the unknown object, which is what we're looking for. Now we can go ahead and plug in all the numbers that we have. So, mass of aluminum, 75 grams. The specific heat of the aluminum, I have that written down right here, which is 0 0.215 calories per gram per centigrade degree. Of course, we don't have to do this in calories, we can do this in joules and it will work out just the same. The change in the temperature, okay, the aluminum went from an initial temperature of 20 degrees centigrade and finished at a final temperature of 24 degrees centigrade. Now, we want the difference to be a positive number. We're just looking for the delta and we want it to be a positive number. So the difference between these two is 4 degrees centigrade. So we can write this as 24 uh, degrees centigrade minus 20 degrees centigrade for a total of a difference of 4 degrees centigrade. Now we're going to do the same for the water. So we have 250 grams of water times the specific heat for water, which is one calorie per gram per centigrade degree. And then the difference in temperature is also 24 degrees centigrade minus 20 degrees centigrade, or four centigrade degrees difference for the water. And then finally, we're gonna divide the whole thing by the mass of the unknown, which, yes, it is 100 grams. And the delta T of the unknown, now here we have to be careful, it started at 100 degrees and it ended up at 24 degrees. So there was a negative temperature drop 
of 76 degrees. But instead of writing negative 76 in there, we want the difference to be positive. Remember, for this equation to work, all quantities on both sides have to be positive. So here we're going to write down 100 degrees centigrade minus 24 degrees centigrade for a difference of 76 degrees centigrade in the positive sense. All that has to be positive to get a value for C. What would happen if we make this a negative number? We get a negative C, and of course that's impossible. There's no such thing as a negative specific heat for any substance. All right, so now we need a calculator, and we can work these things out. So we have 75 times 0.215 times 4. We add to that, so let me write it down in between value. So this is equal to uh, 645 plus 250, let me equal parentheses, 250 times 1 times 4, that would be 1,000. Hmm, something doesn't seem right here. 64.5, my eyes aren't so good anymore, and maybe I missed that little decimal place right there on my calculator. So uh, plus 1,000 equals, and now we're going to divide the whole thing by what's underneath here, which would be 400, and of course that would give me the units of C, which is uh, calories per gram per centigrade degree. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I make another mistake. I was just thinking that this was a difference of 4, but of course it's not. It's a difference of 76 times 100. All right, so let me try that again. So we have 1064.5 divided by so this is 100 times 76, so that's 7600, divided by 7600, okay, so divided by 7600 equals 0 0.14 calories per gram per centigrade degree. Now, of course, this is a hypothetical problem. I didn't use real numbers or real substances except for, yes, indeed, the aluminum cup has a specific uh, heat of 0 0.215, and for water it's 1. Of course, the unknown was just grabbed out of the sky, and whatever that may be, that would be the unknown specific heat for this. Again, the way you do this calorimetry, you want to make sure that you add up all the heat that was gained, and that was equal to all the heat that was lost. So you want both sides of the, the equation to be positive quantities. We know that the heat gained or lost by substance is always going to be equal to the mass times the specific heat, times the change in the temperature, so we do that for aluminum, for water, and then of course for the unknown, but we want to isolate the specific heat of the unknown, so we're going to divide both sides of the equation by the mass and the difference in temperature of the unknown. Turn the equation around, makes a little bit more sense that way. Then we plug in all the numbers, and of course mass of the unknown is 100 grams, the change in temperature is 76 degrees, and we want that to be a positive quantity. When we then do the calculation correctly, we get the final result of 0.14 calories per gram per centigrade degree. And that's a very nice example of how we use calorimeters in general, but now in the next examples we're going to do some specific examples in chemistry where we're going to have reactions and try to determine the heat released in a calorimeter. There's two different kinds, so we'll learn about those. And now from that we're supposed to be able to figure out the enthalpy change in a chemical reaction using the measurement of calorimeters. That's how we do that.